today's build, or rather assembly, not much building to do on this model, is this Volantex Super Cub. It says Decathlon on this side, but uh, trust me, it's a Super Cub. The box then contains all the parts that we need. A wing there with the servos installed. A tail plane comes with its own transmitter. I'll be using that for the maiden flight, but afterwards probably convert it to my multi-protocol module in my Tyrannus. A rather substantial fuselage, EPP foam but with a plastic cowling there, and a rather long extension. Don't quite like the look of that. Looks like something that might get bent in a, one of my heavy arrivals. And just feeling the weight of that, I had hoped that this would be included in my sub 250 challenge, as it said in the description that the flying weight was 200 grams. But clearly, I can feel here and looking at the standard servos, this is going to weigh uh, an, a lot more. We shall see. Tail fin and the usual bag of goodies. Good to see a spare prop in there. I think we might need that. And the undercarriage and servo leads, etc. Also comes with the standard battery for this model. I do have some of a similar size, which I can use as well. The battery arrangement is rather odd. The only way to put the battery in is vertically, which gives you very little control over the centre of gravity, especially if you wanted to use alternative batteries. Let's move on then and look at the instructions, start the assembly. The instructions make no mention of this, but it seems logical to put the decals on before assembling the model, and you can see in the pictures there, they're already there. I think, and I hope, that that was the most challenging part of this assembly because I found it pretty taxing, pretty difficult. Uh, getting the decals off of the back sheet, sometimes the adhesive stayed down and in other places I had to go over the lines with my craft knife, my scalpel, to get the decals to release. There's no clear pictures as to where they actually go, but I think I've done a reasonable job. To start the assembly proper now, I suggest you disregard the instructions here completely. It's complete nonsense. The first thing to do is to put the elevator onto the rudder section and then pass the tailwheel through this small hole at the bottom because the, the tailwheel is actually steerable, of which it makes no mention at all. After you've threaded it carefully through there, you then have to jiggle around with the assembly to get the wire in behind this little plastic plate. It's a bit of juggling and then you can gently push down on the rudder section. It says to secure it with screws, which is a great idea. You have two bags of screws. Uh, this bag has the longer bolts included, so I think that's for the wing assembly, which leaves us with this, which has two likely looking almost wood type screws, which look long enough to go through those two holes there. It says to fix the tail wheel by a screw. I just don't understand how that's supposed to work at all. There is no screw as far as I can tell. I'll get on and put those screws in now. The next part of the instructions, reasonably straightforward, securing the landing gear. The arrangement here is a bit flaky. I'm not sure whether there's supposed to be four screws or just the two. We'll see how it holds up. Attaching the propeller is a challenge. There should be a nut installed al already, and then you'll put the propeller on, and there's a self-locking nut that goes on the end. But you can't tighten it easily, because as you tighten it this way, the screw at the back unscrews. The only way I found in the end was with an old blunt pair of side cutters to get behind the propeller there and grip the shaft whilst I tightened the nut. And then you just press the spinner on afterwards. It then says to insert the wing. I would guess that you would need to install the aileron harness first, otherwise that's not going to work too well. Let me get that put in place. Before we go much further and put the wing on as it suggests, there are other jobs to do which it makes no mention of. We haven't put the control horns or the, or the control linkages for the aileron servos yet. The ailerons need to be connected to the receiver inside. There's this little addendum sheet because this is a new receiver. This is in the correct orientation towards the front of the plane. So on the outside, 
there's no function and the next one in next to the rudder is the aileron so you put the extension lead in there onto the aileron and then connect the two aileron servos let's just apply some power now we'll turn the transmitter on battery connected now we have a flashing red light let's just try that again turn this transmitter off and on not quite sure what happened there but now we have a solid red light and we heard the servos initializing we can hear the aileron servos moving haven't got the controls on there yet elevator is functioning there and the rudder Finally, if we arm the motor, yep, plenty of power there. Now that I know that the electrics are working and wired up correctly, I can go ahead and put the final linkages and control horns on. Then we can check. Obviously, the rudder is off center here, as we can see. We need to center those up and then we'd be ready to fly. We're getting there now. I've put the linkages and the servo horns on. Haven't screwed them in yet. I'm going to check when I've put the radio on that they're more or less in the correct position. The servo arrangement inside needs some attention. Clearly the rudder servo is nowhere near centered, which accounts for the offset on the rudder. And I note that the elevator horn has not been cut down sufficiently. It's actually touching the size of the fuselage there. So I need to take both of those off and uh, do some adjustment. She's ready for the off now. I had to reverse the elevator servo and that's well described in the manual for, for a change. It doesn't seem to be an awful lot of throw on the elevator, but we'll see how we get on. Got our rudder function there. And finally, ailerons all moving in the correct direction. Now this model does have gyro stabilization, which is switched off at the moment. I put it into the mid mode. You can hear the servos as you move the model. All appears to be going in the correct direction. And we also have a beginner mode, which is similarly stabilized, but more aggressive, I guess. There's only one way to find out. Let's go fly. Oh, before that, I guess we're interested in what the all up weight is. So I've zeroed the scales there. I've marked under the wing there where the center of gravity should be. And there she is. I'm not quite sure if you can see the scales there, but that's 276 grams. So just a tad over the 250, it's not going to come into that class. Never mind. Let's go fly. Almost silent. There she goes, beautiful. Just at half throttle there in the intermediate mode. Okay. Beautiful. Oh, 
Definitely do with some more elevator though, I think. Ailerons seem to be very good. Nearly, nearly. <laughs> it's down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it would have you could have brought it across. It was a bit floaty. You can see then that despite my best efforts, I've managed to bring it home in one piece. A bit of grass on the edge there. Essentially unscathed, despite my two landings in the grass, one day I'll get it right. On one of them, the propeller snapped. These are very fragile propellers. And as I mentioned before, I'm not really overly struck by this arrangement with the long threaded motor shaft there. It's just asking to get bent. Probably after my next outing, when this prop is busted as well, I will seek an alternative arrangement. I think the best idea is to cut the shaft down and either use one of these bullet type connectors and a conventional type of prop or maybe even to save more prop embarrassment a folding prop that would sit on there quite nicely. Other than that my only other complaint really is the elevator throw. I find a little less than uh, I would like it but maybe it's something I just have to get used to. I've moved the control rod into the outermost hole on the servo and the uppermost hole on the elevator to give it the maximum throw possible. We'll just have to see how that goes. Other than that, plenty of power. Flies beautifully, I think you would agree, as you saw in the in the video footage. I am tempted to try and get it below 250 grams. When I change the prop, I'll have a look inside here and see if there's any potential for swapping the motor out. Maybe that's the heaviest part. I can see through the holes here. It is quite a large outrunner motor and I think with this lightweight airframe it could probably get away with a smaller motor. Maybe we can just sneak in under the 250 gram radar. Thanks for watching then. Please give it a like and subscribe.